platinum uh, made a parabolic top at the same time that silver made a parabolic top. So we see that during monetary crises, platinum does make a moonshot and slingshot just like gold and silver does. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we have some electrifying news that you won't want to miss. Rafi Farber is here to break down the sensational moment when gold and silver have reached all-time highs. Yes, you heard that right, in platinum terms. Why is this such a big deal? What does it mean for your investments in the future of precious metals? Rafi's expert analysis will unravel the exciting details and the potential opportunities ahead. So, buckle up and get ready for an exhilarating dive into the world of gold and silver with Rafi Farber. Let's get started. So, the story goes that two days ago, a friend of mine called me and said, Rafi, I've got uh, an ounce of platinum and I would like to buy some silver with it. I don't have any platinum, so yeah, sure, I'd like a platinum coin. I've always wanted one. I never had one before. I never even felt platinum. So he came over. I looked at the platinum silver ratio and I found that it was 34 to 1. I was like, yeah, okay. Well, I counted out 34 one ounce coins. He gave me his ounce of platinum. I gave him 34 ounces of silver and it was a good trade. And then he left. And then what happened was that I did a little bit more research and I came upon this very shocking graph that I'd never seen before. How much silver does it take to get to the platinum center of a platinum pop? And so when this guy left my house and I zoomed out on the platinum to silver chart, it now costs 34 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of platinum. Go out to 1970, which is as far as this chart goes, and this is the lowest that this ratio has been, meaning silver is more expensive in platinum terms than it has ever been, with only one exception, at the end of 1979 and the very beginning of 1980. But this number, around 34, 35, 36, whatever it is exactly, has been hit one, two, three, four, maybe five or six times since the 1970s. And it means that platinum is as cheap as it will ever be, probably, in silver terms. And so I got a pretty good deal on platinum. For silver. Now the point here isn't to trade in all your silver for platinum. I certainly did not do that and I would not recommend, I don't recommend anything in this channel, but I would not recommend anyone do that. The point rather is that if you have a lot of silver, more than you may need for about a year's worth of expenses in the end game, which is my philosophy on how much silver I stack, and you're running out of room and you don't have any platinum and you'd like some platinum and you think it's really cool, then now would be a very good time to exchange some extra silver for platinum. If your silver safes are running out of room and you'd like some platinum, what you can do is go to a coin shop, offer to trade silver for platinum. And now here I wanted to show some price action. We have going back to 1910, this chart I got from Gold Charts or Us. And what we see here is two major triangles from 1980 to about 2000 platinum uh, made a parabolic top at the same time that silver made a parabolic top. So we see that during monetary crises, platinum does make a moonshot and slingshot just like gold and silver does. So we have one triangle here and one triangle, huge triangle here, which is coming to resolution over here between about $900 and $1,100. Um, once we hit an apex here, we're probably going to head a lot higher into the next monetary crisis. And we see what platinum did going into 2008 from 2000, 2008, we went from about $400 to, I think that's about $2,000, $2,300, a silver like slingshot. So you can be sure that platinum will head higher into a monetary crisis, but exactly how it will behave is hard to tell. Someone asked me on my last article on my Substack where I wrote about platinum because of this incident. What about the catalytic converters, Rafi? Isn't most platinum demand from catalytic converters? Well, yes, in a modern sense, that is true. If you look at here at the Statista uh, use of platinum by industry, we have 88.4 tons for exhaust treatment systems, 55.25 tons for jewelry, chemical catalysts, glass production electronics, and other applications. So if you look at work at these numbers, exhaust treatment systems are about 40% of demand. And then what happens if all cars are now electric cars and then you don't have any catalytic conver converter demand anymore well i'll show you this chart uh, which i can't really explain i can just show you what history shows and i'm going to minimize myself here so you can see the whole chart clearly 
Um, I put different markings here on this logarithmic platinum chart from about 1860. I think it goes back to 1860 here. So we see a very firm trading range starting from about 1900 to now, and we're still in this range today. The catalytic converter actually was invented in 1950. So I marked that year over here. And uh, the trend hasn't really changed since the invention of catalytic converters and the use of platinum in those things. And look at that. We are at the bottom of the trading range uh, going into this triangle over here. After this triangle over here, those are these red lines diagonal going down, showing trading triangles that happened three times, once from 1920 to 1932, 1933, once from 1980 to 2000, and once from 2008 to now. And we are at the apex of this triangle. So what is the explanation regarding catalytic converters? Why has the price action in platinum not really changed? Well, my suspicion is, and I don't know this for sure because I'm not a platinum market expert, is that if theoretically everything goes to electronic vehicles, EV, which I don't think is going to happen so soon or at all, and there is no more need for catalytic converters, well, then the price of platinum will fall temporarily until the demand for jewelry for platinum jewelry will pick up the demand that is lost from the catalytic converters going off the market or becoming in less in demand. Because if jewelry is cheaper, if platinum jewelry is cheaper than gold and silver jewelry, then jewelry demand goes into platinum and monetary demand goes into gold and silver. And this is just a guess. And it's just to try to explain why the platinum price action hasn't really changed much since, or logarithmically at least, since catalytic converters were introduced in about 1950, 1950s. And so if you've always wanted some platinum, you've got a little bit too much silver in terms of storing it. It's becoming a little bit of a burden because it's a very bulky metal. Platinum is actually the second densest or third densest element in the universe. It is more dense than gold. Gold is 19.4, 19.6. And if I remember correctly, platinum is 21.45 grams per cubic centimeter. It is heavy. Here, uh, platinum, we're on the same scale here on the right and the left. So the top of this chart you can see that from 1970, really going back to 1910, for about 100 years or so, gold was consistently lower than platinum. Platinum has always been more expensive than gold until 2015. In 2015, it started to change, gold turned around, and platinum stayed pretty much steady. It looks like we have a very solid support zone just below $1,000, and uh, when this gets broken, platinum could make a moonshot. And the situation where gold is more expensive than platinum has only been around for you know the past nine years or so. It is not historically normal. And if you look here at the gold platinum spread, as long as this is around zero, then gold and platinum are the same price. Once we're above it, then platinum is more expensive. And we broke below it consistently starting in around 2015. Edge below it a little bit in 2011, 2012, and now we're consistently below. So for the first time uh, since the 19th century, I think, platinum is cheaper than gold and uh, now is uh, a pretty interesting opportunity if you want to diversify your precious metals. Thank you for joining us on this thrilling exploration of gold and silver's record-breaking highs with Rafi Farber. We hope you found this analysis as exciting and insightful as we did. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more updates on the precious metals market. Share your thoughts and questions in the comments below. We love hearing from you. Stay tuned for more exciting content. And until next time, keep shining bright.